Well, it's welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Today they're giving about 33 degrees. So I'm up in Yeovil and I thought, I've got to go river fishing, I can't come all the way back down here again. It's very, very, very low. It's going to be very hot. And do you know why I've picked this river? Because there's chub in it. Not monstrous chub, but nice chub. And chance of showing you some techniques. I don't think, maybe I've talked about it before. Uh, but more important, if you look along here, it's shade. The only, the only reason I've picked this particular swim is because up there, it's going to be 32, 33 degrees, something crazy. I've actually got an umbrella, so if I have to find fish and it's in a different place, well, I have to put an umbrella up and hide under that. So, what we're going to be doing is talking about link ledgering. Now, link ledgering is sort of old school. You don't sort of hear it much now. It's all great big leads, bolt rigs, boilies, bosh in it. Goes for barbel and carp and whatever. Uh, it's, it's, you know, there's other ways to fish. It's, I'm not saying there are better ways to fish, but if you get it right, the link ledger can be absolutely devastating because you can balance it, um, you know, to just bump the bottom. And there's not much flow here. Look, beautiful little weir pool. This water is clear. It can apparently go flooded and coloured, but this is about as low as I'm ever going to probably see it. So I generally do okay in low water conditions. There is not another angler in sight. Fine, that's okay. I know it's hot. I know they think the fish won't feed. I might prove them different. Let's get tackled up. Right, I've been piling loads of fish out, to be honest, for the last two or three weeks and the line gets twisted in it. So I take the bail arm, I open the bail arm and because I don't want any twists in the line, I'm going to walk some line out like this. Just lay it down on the grass. Hopefully the dog doesn't run through it. And they're going to try and take the twists out of it. So I do that by just holding the line between my fingers and I'm going from the rod tip end down towards the end of the line. You'll feel there'll be lots of little ridges in it where it's been twisted up and it might have been pulled across snags. And this is new line and I've caught a lot of fish barbel dragging it all over rocks. And it also gives you the benefit of trying to find any weak areas there. But more important, I'm doing it because I want to get the twist out of it so it's all smooth. You think I'm stupid, there's a guy down there doing it as well. Look, there's two of us doing it. There you go, just taking the twist out the line. Don't burn your fingers. Real easy, kids, to burn your fingers. So I'm hoping you guys will see this. The best place to do it is against the sky, I feel. Let's have a look. If it doesn't work out, I'll do it at home. Let's get that camera straight. Right. My main line runs right through to my hook. I've got a small spool there. I think we've got about a size 10. There's the link of nylon. And at the bottom of that, there's a knot so the shot doesn't slide off. Because the, the ability of this rig is that you can add or delete shot on there to suit the current you're going through. It's stopped by a shot here, just a single BB. I've got maybe, what, 10 inches there to the hook, which is a wide gate barbless. And there's about 10 or something like that, onto which I'm gonna try a piece of bread plate. Now, you cast this out and it will bump around on the bottom. It's so light with a, I think that's a treble shot actually, that one there. It's so light that it'll probably get carried around, but eventually, if it doesn't get hit while it's bumping around, it will eventually settle on the bottom and that will give you an idea how much shot you should add or weight you should add if you want to anchor say over in the faster water over there. As you can see way back there I could probably hold with this treble A shot with the bubbles just slow up there. Here in the faster water I'm guessing the fish are going to be in the faster water because of the oxygen uh, content where it's so hot it's going to be better up here. I'm going to throw out there and see what we get. Another little tip is with weir pools it's not always best to throw right up in the weir. Now this is just a little cobbled weir if you like. As you can see with weirs branches and twigs and rubbish gets well let me stand up there. They get crashed over and very often they'll just hang down there so you think that's where the fish will be and they probably are but also loads of snags right in that bit. You might be better towards a little bit I'm going to say two thirds three quarters of the way down from the weir where the current evens out a bit more. Right let's get a bait in the water. You see in here that I've got Bit of sweet corn left, but it's all left over from a carp fishing session. I've got some meat, I've got some ground bait, I've got a load of slopped up bread, and I'm going to throw some of this out there willy nilly. Just 
let that break up in the current there and work its way down and then I'm going to follow it up with a hook bait so difference in the speed this has dropped down and that has gone zooming away in the current and you've got to find the balance you know which is the best part you get a piece of blood flow hooked up and you cast it out you wouldn't surprise me if you get a fish first time very very small river this but at the present conditions beautiful and clear and plenty of small chub in here as well to test out this uh, theory it's not a theory just to show you hopefully it does work doesn't hurt to break up some Red as well, throw that out. This is crust that I can use to suspend or I can just throw and very often fish will come up, especially in these low summer conditions, they'll come up on the surface. I would think down there to those rushes, fish will get, any fisherman here will eventually push the fish over that side. Piece of bread flake, as you know, leave the point showing, just pinch around the edge of the hook. Now you can see the, the link ledger slides back to there just going to cast it out. I'm going to put it in the rod rest here and just let it and see where it's sat. I'm going to watch the rod, try and keep as still as I can. It's going to go round in the current very, very slowly. You can always take a turn or two just to get tension on that tip and wait and see if a fish will come up to it. It appears it's going round very slow, so I might even need to get a lighter shot on there. Oh, I flirted dangerously the weir, lost a set of gear, rigged up again, and I've come just upstream here. Because you think I know where I'm fishing? No, no, the sun's come out there and I'm frying. But I've thrown some bread in further up some ground bait, and I'm going to come down here and just link ledger it down here. Right, at least this way, hopefully, I won't lose any gear. I wouldn't surprise you if I get what I call a fast take here, right. So I'm going to keep it dead still. Watch that rod top just there, guys. I might have to... Yep, there's a tap. I think that's a tap. I just got tension on it. There's something, a small fish on it. Now, when you get that small fish like this, bang, 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 and it stops, as I said before on other films, it goes quiet. That's when a big chub or a big barbel's moved up. Push the small fish away and you can get a take on after that quiet period so it might take 30 seconds or so it might go quiet where they're feeding around your bait the big ones <clears throat> if the small fish start rattling and tapping away at it again then the chances are you know the big fish have moved off as well as the bread I've got a bit of lunch and meat there and I could try some sweet corn as well that doesn't hurt to throw a bit of corn in does it Just grab a handful in there, and out it goes. Oh, ducks. <coughs> well, well, it's feeding the ducks. It's not wasted, is it? I can actually see the corn going down. Oh, I can see a chub down there. I see a chub taken now. Let's try a piece of corn instead of that bread. I've thrown some more corn in, as you can tell by the amount of ducks coming around. Psst. Go on, clear off. I can see Chubb moving down there. I'm going to put it in the rest now. What I have noticed, because I've come away from the weir, is a more even flow here, and it will be a constant slower. I feel I could go lighter with just a BB shot and let it just bump round, just let it bump round lightly. I've got a feeling these fish will take better on the move, which gives me the option. There we go. Oh, nearly gives me the option of uh, going to what we call free lining. I've got a bite on there. They want it, but not quite strikeable. Small fish on it. There it's stopped. There should be a decent chub coming up to it now, I'm guessing. Pound or so, pound and a half. That seems to be the average in there, two, two and a half. The thing with bread is it can come off a hook with those small fish. With sweet corn does tend to stay on a little bit longer. I think these guys are going to want a moving bait. Whoa, what are getting on, guys? We we're on the corn. We're in on the corn. I was look. I'm looking away down there, miles away, 
and that's what happens, look, the rod straight over. Wow, it's not a dace or a roach, it's definitely a chub this one. Oh man, that's a nice chub. That's not a pound and a half. Digging for the rushes way over there, you can see him. Hopefully, I'm not happy with this camera, it's got a monstrous microphone on it. It keeps tipping down at the wrong angle, but it is good quality. He's digging for the rushes, people. And I'm going to get him out. Am I going to get him out? Come on. Generally, the chub you lose in the rushes. Oh, he might kick his way out. I've got a lot of pressure on there. I can see the fish, I can't get through him. Cannot get through him. Oh, he's out, he's out, he's out, he's out. Oh, he's hanging there. And he's in the tiny teaspoon landing net I bought with me. Oh boy, that's a nice chub. That's way bigger than I thought I'd be getting. That is a, that's a beauty, people. That's uh, way better than I thought it would be. I'm trying to get this awful microphone that Mike's bought me. Look at that one. Now you can see that's link ledged, and that is a real beaut. What a beauty, boys. And that's on the sweet corn, just changed on the sweet corn. But I still feel I do better if I take that uh, shot off, and that's the advantage of the link ledger. Let's get this guy back. So, the, uh, the thought there is don't take your eyes off the rod, guys. So, there are obviously some good chub in here. Um, I've seen another fish, I think, move over the back there. I think another handful of bait in there. Let's see if we can't wiggle another one out for you. And then we're, we're going to try it with that shot, the same shot, and go a little bit farther over and throw the bait farther over. I just feel the fish would be along that far bank more. So if I put the bait on, not hook myself with a leg. Right, so just to show you it's a bit easier. There's the link ledger, can you see it? It's just on that short link. One shot stopping it. Of course you can make a smaller shot there to make the rig even lighter. About 8 or 10 inches and then 2 grains of sweet corn. I just throw about 6, 8, eight grains in at one go. Hopefully here, if I move that there, you guys might even be able to see if I do get a tape because I didn't do the last one. put it straight down there. I think you'll be seeing the rod top up there if it does go. Just going to tighten up. Yeah, sometimes they do, they do like a bump, you know, if you bump it, if it sits too long. And if I was honest, I like to fish the lightest link ledger I can in order to cover as much ground as I can. You've got two ways of fishing it, right? You can anchor it just in the bottom of, and let it sit there and let a fish come up to it, like I'm doing now. Or you can go much lighter and then bump down to cover more ground for a fish. So there's sort of two ways of fishing it. If I was barbel fishing, possibly I might just have it static like that with a piece of lunch of meat on it. And I just looked down there and the rod was boom, over. A little tremor on the rod top then. Might just be bumping around. Thank goodness we got one fish on the link ledger to show you. But I, I just have the feeling I need to go lighter. Alternative is two. Give yourself some lunch of meat about the size of you know your hooks that you you're using because very often the smell off the lunch of meat is good enough to draw those twitchy fish across, especially chub. In this case, I'm just going to push it in like that just once because I've got to strike through it. I'm going to drop that one out there. I throw some more bread in, but we'll try a piece of meat. There might be a bit more smell to it.
sort of draw it back. There's a little patch of gravel I see there. Put it down. I think I just got the feeling these fish are going to want to move in bait in this current. They're used to people float fishing and that's feeding the bait through. But I thought it's a good place to come and show you if I could get a, a fish or two out of it with the quiver tip and the link ledger. And that's with a piece of meat on there. There's the bite. There's one bite on. Come on. Hopefully, got the camera pressed on then, guys. That's how fast the meat can work. Smaller fish, but a real nice one. So the link ledger is just resting there. I wasn't even moving. That's the one where I'm letting the fish. Oh, come towards the bait. Well, this was a move I made. Subject to the weather being really hot, I thought I've got to keep away from the still waters and just go for the for the rivers. It is a stunner of a day. Most people think it's not a day for fishing, but I beg to differ. Just go for the rivers. There we go. The like the me because he took it way back. That's another pretty cool looking chub is it not link ledge is a way to go boom I figure that's two fish out this swim I figure there's two fish out this swim I wonder if there's going to be a third one I do fancy the meat so anyway I can chuck a couple of loose ones up there and I can watch those sink and if they go out, so, you know, because they're light, if they go out, I know the chub has taken them. There's two there. And they're still sinking to the bottom. As you can see one of them laying on the bottom. Now it's gone. I'm hopeful, people. Now, I haven't thrown any more bread in because they, they sort of know I'm here, as it were. Wow, they zoomed all around it then. Let's just let it sit, like we did last time. Oh, I had a bite, then I missed it. Don't take your eyes off the rod top, guys. As I was putting it in the rest, it went. He might, might have had the bait off. No, it's still a little, little tiny quiver on it. Which is why they call it a quiver tip. And, I, and another little tip is they do tend a lot of the time with chub to take it as soon as the bait settles within seconds. So I'm going to put this one straight back out. I'm going to, seems a short time to leave it, but oh, he's had the bait off. He has had it off. Look, and this is telling me to go lighter. Can you see this, this weed here? Silkweed. That's telling me that I don't really need to anchor it on the bottom. Look, because that slides down and goes around the hook. So one more cast with the static link ledger and we're going to drop the shot size and I'm going to probably hold this at the same time just trying to drop it down there I can actually see the bait lying on the bottom down there here comes a chub I see a chub coming up coming up coming up I'm on I'm on that is visual fishing that time guys I'm not going to say it was a quiver tip, but you can see the link ledger just resting, just barely holding it on the weed. That um, the fish was there. Here he comes. <laughs> I mean, I've only come down it just <laughs> to amuse myself. It's just, a, it's not some secret squirrel, private stretch, syndicated club special, don't don't look at me or you get penalised type of place. It's just a day ticket water. Ah. Uh. That is another two and a half, I would say. So here is the beauty of the link ledger. There's my link. Got a treble A shot on. Take it off, put a small BB on, 
Now at the end of that I've got a little knot there to stop that sliding off, it jams in weed, you can pull through and the shot slides off. So I've gone lighter, there's my bait, let's get it out there. So this time I'm going far, oh I'll go farther over in the bush, oh beautiful, dropped off the rushes. I'm touch legs across my fingers, I'm watching, watching this time. Now it's sinking way slower, way slow. He comes, moved away. I'm watching the luncheon meat on the bottom there. Fish is on it, he's two inches from it. But now, look, watch, you won't see this down there, but I can just lift that and just bump it. Very often, they'll, they'll grab that as it bumps back. What I'm gonna do in a minute, if he comes, missed him. A little bit keen on that one. Keen, keen's the word. So I'm just pushing. If you guys are seeing this, this microphone is just a nightmare on my head. It weighs a ton and it pulls the camera down. I need my old GoPro 3. Over we go again. Not too far this time. Sinking, 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 sinking. Now my piece of meat that I struck off is not has not been taken. So I'm actually bumping it farther back. I can see the meat just rolling along because this is so light, this shot. I can actually just raise the rod top, lift that link ledger BB shot off of the bottom and move the bait along. Here we go, here he comes. Okay, it's resting on the bottom. Fish is going up past it. Is he going to pick it up? He's... Oh, <laughs> they're cute guys. They're taking it, but just in their lips. They know there's a line there. Try again. Just leave that camera running. They do like meat, probably better than corn in fairness. There it goes. Just the shot's just towing it down. It's now on a sort of a piece of gravel, but I can't see the bait this time. So he might might be in the weed. Gonna bump it. Sink it's going down like this, down like this, down like this. Nothing. Okay, I'll get this weed on that. Now look what I said. This is the voice of experience. They are not, repeat, not taking that. Fish might be stupid. They're not that stupid. A little bit farther over. Here he comes. Oh! Boy, I miss it. They're blowing it, sucking it and blowing it out so fast. I'm wondering, should I take the shot off totally, people? Right, I've lost the, uh, I've lost the shade again, guys. Hence the fact I'm putting this on. Getting burnt. A little tip. Might seem gross. Serious old school fisherman will know what I'm talking about. I've worked my hands on the grass because I put sun oil on my fingers. I do not want it. I've got it on the towel as much as I can. I don't want it on my bait, so I'm getting whatever bait I can. And that's the fingertips I put on. So I'm using sun oil and I'm mashing fatty, mashed up, yucky, all over my fingers because I don't want the fish being put off by the smell of whatever is in that sun oil. Old school guys know what, exactly what I'm talking about. Just the way it is. Oh, it's sort of sun cream and pork lunch and meat that's been in the sun for two days. Nice. I'll get this awful microphone thing on my head and see if I can get another chub for you guys. I am now, wait for this, the link ledger is here. I've taken everything off. Now don't forget, if you get fast water, big rapids, you can you can just keep stacking shot up here, up this line, up this link. You can keep stacking it, one, two, three, four, until you anchor bottom, if you want to anchor bottom. And then if you want to start moving, you take your shot off like I do, because it's low water summer conditions. And I just got the link itself and I've got one BB. So this will go through even more. In fact, I'll get a better piece of bait than that. That's, that's a, bit, a bit rank, that one. This is a sort of tip more for the refined anglers, those refined free line visual anglers. I've cut 
the lunch I mean not in a square but narrow like that and I'm going to put the hook through the narrow side like this I'll tell you why because I'm now going sort of semi-visual because it's coming up 12 o'clock that's as high as the sun gets in the sky I've got my best visibility for seeing a fish take the bait and chance of getting a good sized one that will then lay down on the gravel like that, or gravel, whatever is on the bottom, silkweed, whatever, and I can see it better. It's a bigger area, so you're doing a sort of squash flat version, and I do that with cheese paste as well, all the time. Squeeze it flat rather than an absolute ball. Squeeze it flat. I find I get a better hookup, but more important, I can see that bait on the bottom, and when a chub comes up to it, he's nosing it, he's nosing it, boom! You just see that go, it's like switching the light off, wham! See if I know what I'm talking about. Let's have a go. Okay, locked and loaded with a piece of flat lunch of me, and no way other than the BB is sinking very, very slowly. He's took it and blew it. Oh, I got him! Oh, I told you, man, alive. He's taking me upstream. Oh, he's in the weeds. He's in the weeds. He's in the weeds. Come out. That was as sweet as you like. Visual, and I've got to admit. When it gets to visual fishing, I get pretty good at it. I've done a lot of this on Hampshire Raven years ago. And I'm getting, I've got to be honest, much bigger chub than I thought I would catch. Come on, babe. Polarising glasses. I can't use a peak cat because I've got this camera thing on my head with this massive microphone Mike's bought me. Not great. Oh, I expect the sound picks up the train going past. Hi. Big chub, you know, they're all, normally they're, they're smaller chub, but these are nice chub. I fished here once before, and I never got fish this size. There we go, absolute beauty, boys. Absolute beauty. Now I've gone totally to free line. So I've got no shot, I've just got a single hook. I can either watch the quiver tip, or I feel the line across my fingers or I see the bait go. So I find if you put your fingers like this, like I've got them here, you want it across the, the ball of the finger there. Not somewhere where you're always gripping stuff. You want it where you've got the most sensor, sensitivity there. And I, I bend it like this with this finger, watch. Over, so I've got a kink in it there. Lob it out first. I mean, I've lost the sun, so this might not work. This might not work. I've lost the sun. Bosh, I shut the bay line. I tighten up, I've got the line across my fingers there. I've got the sensitivity, sensitivity if I could speak properly, of the quiver tip. I'm visually watching that lunch meat go down naturally. I can still see it, here comes the sun. I see it, I see it, I see it. I don't see any chub there. I raise the rod top a bit. I don't want to move the actual action of that sinking. You want it sinking as naturally as you can. Now it's bumping along the bottom. No chub there. You just raise the rod top to get it up to the surface look, slowly, and I get a second cast out of it. Shortly, having got those fish out of here, going to move up that way a bit. Try a little bit farther up. Sinking, sinking, sinking. Don't see any chub. I've lost the light. Basically, looking for that that light of the luncheon meat to go out. If it goes black, it goes out, it could be a chub. I think there was a chub and I missed him. Now, a swim like this, there's no point going downstream, is there? Because the weir's there. So you want to work your way upstream. One more cast with a piece of flat luncheon meat. This technique, if you get it right, with the slow sink and visual watching the bait, watching the fish, can be absolutely deadly. Only, you know, when you can see the fish and you can see the bait, you need to see both in relation to each other. Now I've lost the visual, so I'm on the quiver tip and I'm on my, my fingers here for the touch ledgery. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Maybe it's time to move swims. 
just draw it up one more go now I don't see any chub here I've moved up see where I am I've only come 40 feet I'm not going to cast yet I haven't seen a fish I'm going to walk back more in and out this way so I keep my outline away from uh, the riverbank what's quite nice is when a dog walker has a dog off a lead and he comes and pees at my camera bag that's quite that's quite fun what if they like me to go into the lounge and pee on their settee a little sampling of my bread slop won't go amiss I feel lets me know and it lets them know I'm here right we'll try the free line down first Pshew. try and avoid a duck in the process quite a bit more current down there surprising and my meat because it's squeezed flat is staying up on the surface going down there now you can fish floating crust for these as well Similar effect, we might even try that later, but without the addition of the ducks. Now, I think I might need to ledger harder on the bottom here. Now, I'm watching, I'm feeling the line here and the rod top as well. Just looking basically, four swims, scattering a bit of bait in, and just trying to locate where the fish might be. Small chub there going crazy on the bread. That's a small one now. Don't see anything big flashing around there. This just enables me to have a look before I actually move my tackle. I might just stumble across a couple more fish for you. Been good so far, I have to say. There's a chub down there. And some of that bread has actually stuck to the bottom you know so that's good they'll come up and feed on that that way I've got more chance of getting a fish on a static guys something something I had a tapping bite and left it and left it and left it I've got something down this flashing away it looks like a really big eel not a sort of quarter pounder that ties yourself in knots I've got to take this first time people because if I get if I get this far it is big eel oh, look at this what a turn up for the old brook. Twisting and thrashing down there he is. Look at the rod. He's got it he's got it belted right over. He's not happy bunny. Fairly sure he won't be look hooked. I thought it was a dace tapping away at it. And that goes to show meat. Just come on, come on. Come on. Come on, bud. Oh, that's gonna be a mess in the net, but something to show you people. Here we go. Ah, yes, 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 yes. There he is. Mr. Wiggly Hill. Well, well, what a session. I'm in again, I've only got another eel on. Same type of bite. I don't know if I can get this one out though. He's in a snag, but I might might be able to extend this and get him out. Guys, there's some big eels in here. Check this one out. Same type of bite, same swim, same bit. I've, I've run on fishing there and he's got weed over him as well. So, maybe a tad smaller than the last one. Got a really good chub this time, people. Kind of surprised. I'll still get this amount of fish out of this tiny one stretch. This is a good fish. <laughs> Check this one out, people. That's a beauty, is it not? 
That's my biggest one from here, to be honest. I've only been here two sessions. A bit battle scarred on this side. Big chub. Pleased with that one. Wow. Neat ledgering, touch ledgering, free lining. Not a floating sight, no swim feeders, nothing. It works. Just felt the take, didn't see the fish at all. That is a nice, a nice chub, people, that one. Beauty. It's not far, five pounds, I reckon. This is a guide. Maybe you can hear by the seagulls. I put some bread in there. Just down there. See where the rings over there? There are actually chub coming up, taking floating crust off the surface. But there's some sort of farm or something, refuse area over there, I'm guessing. So the seagulls aren't bothering me yet. Yet. I might or might not try one on the surface, but. I just arrived to point it out that I throw the bread out and just let, let it float down and of course it's ideal because you can just you can just watch it going down there. Now it's shallows here, so any take's gonna be from where it is about there, where it shallows up and the weed is, loads of small ones there, to up here, the back of that weed bed over there. I'll throw some more out just see if we can't get to if I hold it dead still, you might be able to see there's the rings. Of uh, chub taking them, you can get some big chub like this sometimes. There, see the small fish. What happens is it's pretty much like carp fishing. The small fish start nibbling away at it there. That attracts the chub, and you'll get a bigger swirl taking crust off the top. Ideal conditions for it, but I think it's just too hot. There's a chub. There's two chub there. There he goes. Got it. Missed it. He missed it. They're laying. See, it's also telling me from there. I can throw my lunch of meat back. I can see them going around there looking at the job. Okay guys, I've got a piece of lunch of meat on. I've got canoeists and kayakers trying to come down here. It's a rod length wide, why would they come down here? This is kind of crazy to me. Choke the weed and the bait comes off. That's sweet. I'm trying to get one, one cast in before these kayakers come through. So, I've put basically just one shot on. Lunch of meat taken, no link ledger. I'm just going to flick it back there. You might even get to see the bite. If I hold the camera for you. That's what we're looking, looking for. I'll just tighten up a bit. This is me tightening up. And there. Whether we'll be able to see the bite and strike at the same time as beyond me. Or whether we'll actually be able to get <clears throat> a bite before the kayak has come down there and <laughs> ruin it. Well, it's only, it's only fair, isn't it, that uh, everybody using the water, I don't have a problem. I've paid for a day ticket, so have they paid for a day ticket or do they just put a canoe in where they fancy? It's never good, but I haven't had a take. And with the ripple on the water, I'm not going to be able to see any chub, so I might just have one last drop downstream where uh, there's less weed and might give me a better chance of a fish because I could be sitting in the weed there, that's the only trouble. And that's my chance of a fish gone. Thanks guys. I'm going to move now. Well guys, just coming to close out time. Canoes has sort of done it to me. Launched and attacked by, by boat, and I've been assaulted by dogs. One dog had his head in my spam tin, inside my bag. Harry never got a mouthful of hooked, I don't know. But of course the owners uh, aren't too worried. I'm gonna have one last go here, just in the weir pool. I've got a load of bread going down the outside. Whether anything can come up, I don't know. A few casts here, and then I think, the fish have got me beaten, it's too hot, they're not feeding. I might give one more fish.
Well guys, pretty well all done. I've had, I think 12 chub, and that's way more than I thought I'd have. I was only coming down really to show you that link ledger where you can adjust your weight, put different weight shot on, and also free lining, and you know, just basic gear. Doesn't get any more basic than a quiver tip rod. We'll see you guys in the next film. Don't forget, hit the subscribe button, both channels. If you want to support us, Mike does a range of clothing. Again, both channels. And don't forget the little notification bell so you know when a film comes out. I'm off. Thunderstorm's on its way. Cut my losses, boys. And let's get home before I get caught in this lot and electrocuted.